Well, hello, YouTube. This is Thomas Judge back once again with another YouTube reading guide series. Today is the eighth video, or video 08, walking through the Top Cow Artifactiverse, or as some of you may consider it, the Witchblade universe. To create this reading guide, I have read the 902 comic issues that comprise the entire Artifactiverse, and I've used that knowledge to build this reading map, which I'm sharing with you, the viewers. To join this series, I use a couple of technical terms that I made up myself, like volume with big and small v to refer to legacy numbering and what that means, or types of comic readers of type P or type J to refer to people who are obsessed with continuity or not. It can all seem a little bit overwhelming, but I've got a bit more guidance on that in the intro video, video zero, which is in the description below. So with no further ado, let's just dive straight into it. This is the entire reading map. This is the entire artifact of those 902 issues mapped out trade paperback by trade paperback with every single collected and uncollected issue here. So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue this era here, which I've, I've, I've brought them all down to different sections and this is the artifacts era. Um, Please remember the Artifacts era, and in fact, all the names that I've used so far, like Origins era and Before the Rise era, are my own names that I've just made up myself, just to make things a lot clearer. Now, last time we covered quite a lot. We covered all of Witchblade, which is this line in the middle, and we covered all of Darkness, which is this line on the left, and we covered a few more bits and pieces. So, with all that covered, today we actually need to start off somewhere slightly different. We actually need to start over here on the right. We need to start here. If you remember, we started these vids in an era I named before the rise, right at the top of the map. This mainly contained issues related to Cyberforce, and you probably wondered back then what on earth I was doing starting there. Well, here's where this is going to start to begin to, begin to become clear. It's during the Artifacts era that Cyberforce gets relaunched and starts to become very important, okay? The relaunch of Cyberforce actually starts with the launch of Volume 2, Volume with a Big V, of Strike Force back in 2004. So this contains five issues, a five issue miniseries. Um, it's surprisingly hard to find, and you can see here from the dotted line, it's actually uncollected. This is then followed by a series called Cyberforce, which is actually volume three, where it's volume with a big V, because remember the first two runs were part of our previous videos, zero one and zero two. The numbering here starts from one, but it gets a bit more complicated than that, because it's very important to read this in order. Okay, so I'll show you the order on the screen now. The first thing you need to read is issue zero, which was originally published as part of the Image Comics 10th anniversary issue, which is quite hard to find. This is the cover of it here on the side, but issue zero is sort of the important first thing to read. You then need to read JLA Cyberforce. Here's the cover for that. You then need to read Issues 1 to 6 of Cyberforce Volume 3, which is the one we're just talking about. And you then need to read Cyberforce X-Men. Here's the cover for that. The annoying thing is that you will never find what I just described to you collected physically. That's because this art contains both DC crossovers and Marvel crossovers. Not only are they never going to be recollected with Top Cow stuff, they are never, ever going to exist in the same collection. You can buy the paperback, as shown here, but it will not contain the JLA or X-Men issues. You'll have to track those down as singles. For my money, I'm actually getting those custom bound as well. Okay, so like we say, this is a trade paperback cover. This is what I recommend you pick up, um, but you have to be aware of those missing bits of connective tissue. I hope that was all clear, guys, because we're gonna pan out a little bit and things are gonna get a bit weird. So what we need to look at here is this thing called pilot season in the dotted circle. Now. Starting in 2007, Top Cow started running what they called Pilot Season. Pilot Season is not a series, it's not a um, show, and is definitely not a set of comics. It was an annual initiative where Top Cow would publish six unrelated one-shots. So all of them are issue number ones. And then the readers would vote for the one they liked the most. And then the two issues with the most votes went on to become actual ongoing comic series published by Top Cow. Now, I may do a later series on all the pilot season issues over the years and the series that they successfully spun off. And let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested in that because I could do that quite easily. But for now, we only need to concern ourselves with the first pilot season from 2007 as this was the only one where the one-shot issues were all of them, all of them, set within the Top Cow Artifactiverse. So we'll dive into that now. Pilot season 2007 contained the following. It contained Angelus, 
number one, a one shot. This is beautiful art by Stefan Sejic and a great story as well. I was genuinely gutted this didn't become a series. It also contained Cyblade, which went on to win and get a series of its own. This issue is a key one to read before that series though, so you have to read this. Ripclaw, number one, didn't win, didn't continue. Necromancer, number one, didn't win, didn't continue. So this follows on from the mini series we looked at in the last video, but this basically went nowhere. And then Velocity, issue one, this went on to win and to get a series, but we'll talk about that more in a second. So as such, back to the map here, after reading those pilot season one shots, and I would recommend reading all, um, all five of them, um, what you should then read is the Cyblade miniseries from 2008. Now, as you can see from the dotted line here, guys, that also was not collected. Um, it was four issues long, and it picks up directly from the pilot season one shot. So remember to read that first. Following that, you then need to read something called Fusion from 2009. Again, this is uncollected, and it's, that's because it's a very unusual crossover. This three-issue miniseries is a crossover between Cyberforce, fair enough, Hunter Killer, fair enough, Avengers from the Marvel Universe, and Thunderbolts from the Marvel Universe. It's actually a really good little miniseries, making it very annoying that it's not collected into a trade and never will be. The issues are very hard to find. What I'm showing you now is the cover of issue one. It's got beautiful art as well, by the way. Okay, back to the map here. So after Fusion, what we then need to move on to is this one in the solid blue circle you can see, which is Cyberforce Hunter Killer. It's a crossover mini-series, five issues long, a trade paperback is available, and it sets up key events that are going to be critical for the next thing we're looking at, which is Velocity Volume 2. Now, you'll remember there was a Velocity mini-series back in the Before the Rise era. So this now is a second Velocity mini-series. Yes, this was the other winner of Pilot Season 2007. And this four-issue mini helps wrap up a lot of the events along this thread of comics. I'm aware it's something we're reading way after we're reading Cyblade. The reason for that is that it was massively delayed for lots of reasons in the real world that I'm not going to bother going into, but it fits in perfectly here. Keep in mind, it was never released physically, unfortunately. So that wraps up the Cyberforce thread of comics here on the right-hand side of the map. Um, and I hope that makes sense, guys. I hope it's also started to come together a little bit more in terms of why we need to talk about Cyberforce, and that is going to be a running theme over the next few videos and the rest of this, rest of this map as well. So what that now leaves is the outstanding bits. And the next thing I want to touch on is just this row here, which is between Darkness and between Witchblade, and starts off with this event. Now, this actually spins out a Broken Trinity. Broken Trinity is um, obviously the event further up. But what I'm going to do, I would say you should read this roundabout here. It's actually called Broken Trinity Pandora's Box. Um, and I would really read, leave... Sorry, I really leave reading this thread of comics we're about to talk now until literally the end of the whole era for reasons that will hopefully become painfully obvious. So this six issue miniseries has got poor art, poor writing and can easily be ignored. It also doesn't necessarily need to follow on from reading Broken Trinity. So you can read everything in the order that we've discussed, including Cyberforce, including Darkness, and then you come onto this. Now, Broken Trinity um, Pandora's Box is a good way to segue into the next thing, which is the Angelus miniseries. This is a six issue series. It's not related to the one shot from pilot season that we just spoke about. It's not related to that at all, other than being drawn by the same artist. So don't get confused by that. It is, however, a wonderful, touching and beautiful story with some really important plot points in it. I cannot recommend it enough. And from Angelus, we then need to move on to reading Artifacts Volume 1 volume with a small v in fact there's only one volume with a big v of artifacts issues one to 40 which we'll talk about later but this is artifacts volume one or collection one and that collects issues one to four now if you remember and if you've been paying attention you will remember that i previously said in a previous video that issue naught and issue one of artifacts should be read here in the middle of this volume and those same issues are collected here in collection one as well Okay. Personally, I'm picking them up and having them custom bound, but that's a conversation for another day. After reading collection one here, what I would recommend doing is going straight down to collection two, which collects issues five to eight. And then finally, 
that takes us down to collection three, which is the climax of the artifact run, collecting issues nine to 13. Artifacts is a strange one. Issues one to 13 really is just one singular mega event. It was initially intended to be a 13 issue run and issue 13 has a huge, and I cannot stress that enough, huge bearing on the artifact of it. However, the series then continues on in a really strange fashion, limping on through the next era like you can see down here, but we'll talk about that next time. What I should also point out is that these three collections, so Artifacts Issues 1 to 13, is also available as the only other absolute sized comic in the Artifactiverse. In other words, you can buy it as a single hardcover slipcased edition of the comic, which you can see here, of course, which collects these first three trade paperbacks and looks stunning on the shelf. We mentioned this last video when I talked about this and the Firstborn Broken Trinity slipcase hardcover being the only ones in this size and format. Unfortunately, like Firstborn Broken Trinity, this one is also out of print, although a bit easier to find and a little bit less expensive. So back to the map here. This is the end of the origin section, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this pretty much takes us to the end of the, um, sorry, not the origin section, the artifact section. And um, this takes us to the end of the artifacts era, but before we close out on the artifact section of the artifacts era, we should really touch on the last bit to cover, which is the one shots and crossovers right here. I'll throw them up on the screen. Here we have The Darkness vs. Eva, Daughter of Dracula. It's a four-issue series published with Dynamite Comics, not really linked to anything else. Darkness Pit is a three-issue series. Eagle-eyed fans will remember that Pit made a cameo appearance in our very earliest Cyberforce video, Video 01. And the collected edition for Darkness Pit also collects the awesome Darkness Issue 75, which is kind of an Elseworldsy flash-forward issue. Highly recommended, highly recommended. Witchblade Demon Reborn is a four-issue series that continues on from the one-shot Witchblade Demon issue that we came across a couple of times in the Origins era. Witchblade Red Sonia is a five-issue miniseries published with Dynamite Comics. Darkness Dark Child is a one-shot crossover with Dark Child again, who we've seen before. I will do a Dark Child reading order one day, I swear. Devi Witchblade is unusual. It's a one-shot published by an Indian comic company called Graphic India, the same people that did Grant Morrison's 18 Days. But don't worry, it's all in English, not Hindi. It's an okay story, but the cover is by Stefan Szczesek and bears no reflection on the internal art, so to be honest, to me it felt a bit misleading. In the Artifacts era, we also have Magdalena Daredevil, a one-shot crossover with Marvel, and we also have Witchblade Punisher, which is a one-shot crossover with the Marvel character, which is pretty good, actually. Okay, and with that, let's go back to the map here. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is the um, the Artifacts era. Let's just pan out a bit for a bit of context. You can see it all there. It's that pink era there. We've already done the yellow one. We've already done the blue one. We've done before the rise, Origins era, Artifacts era. And next time, ladies and gentlemen, we're moving on into the Rebirth era as I like to call it. See you then. As always, this map is available on my website for you to download free of charge. And if you want to download it or print it out to follow along, please do. It covers all 902 issues. As always, please like, comment, subscribe. As always, feel free to follow me on Twitter, where I post a one tweet daily review, whatever I'm reading, generally comics. And if you want to support the channel, please head over to Amazon and pick up the first volume of my prose superhero novel, No Gods or Kings. It costs you less than a dollar. It's about a future dystopia, utopia world, sort of post-apocalyptic, where superhumans are a reality. And it is pretty interesting. I very much hope that you like it, and I very much hope you leave a positive review. It's also free on Kindle Unlimited as well. Um, if you want to read a free excerpt of it, or if you want to download this reading map, you can do so on the same website, which is nogodsorkings.com. The link is in the description below. Until next time, everyone, stay classy.